In today's presentation, I want to get you thinking about a number of concepts. These include concepts we call black swans, the unforeseeable events in our, in our futures. Sentinels, people who actually build an ability to see those black swan events, to actually see what's coming towards and see what future risks are. Turbulence, about the chaotic nature of the world that we can't live in and what some of the major turbulence drivers going forward. The concept of resilience, it is what you can do in an organisation to build the ability to be a survivor, to be a person or an organisation who can adapt and grow and profit and improve from these adverse conditions that come from, from uh, turbulence. So this afternoon session is about future risks and discussing things that can we actually improve our ability for, to actually foresee those and understand those. Many organisations base their, their risk forecast or their risk understanding on ISO 31000, International Standard on Risk Management. And that standard gets people to contemplate what possible risks their organisation face based on two principles of frequency and consequence, that is how likely they are or how often something happens and the degree of impact an that, that event would have on the organisation. Many organisations spend a lot of effort driving those risks down into that light green area, into the low frequency, low consequence area, and that's where a lot of effort goes. What we see time and time again though, is that organisations experience the black swan events, the unforeseeable risks, those risks that are very low frequency, maybe once in a lifetime or once in a whole company's history, but when they occur are highly catastrophic, have very huge impacts, often making the organisation fail, making it not exist any longer. And what we're certainly we're seeing in the world at the moment, I believe, is an increasing number of those hazards or threats, those risks that are the black swan events. And so I want to explore why is it that risk management is not good at seeing those? Why is it that, that uh, those events are, are, are rarely foreseen? And how can we actually better prepare organisations for those ones that, we, that, that are the black swan events? The slide look at the moment uh, it's drawing out a concept that about about some of the, the gaps or failures that I see in, in uh, risk management. And then just a bit of an uh, anecdotal story here. One, one day I met Nathaniel Forbes, a good friend of mine, and he'd, and he'd been in a saloon or a bar and had quite a bit to uh, drink. And when I was walking along, I, I saw Nat under these, these street lights on, on the pavement searching. And I said, Nat, what had happened? And Nat said, look, I've just been drinking and... Uh, just going back to my car, but I've, I've lost my keys. I'm trying to find them. And I said, Nat, where did you lose them? He said, I don't really know. Well, why are you looking underneath this lamppost? Well, this is where the light is. And I think this very much reflects the story about risk risk management, that uh, people often look at risks from their own mindset of how they see the world works or their company works. And they often don't, don't involve a wider group of people to analyse those, those risks, to think about what is possible. The New South Wales Auditor General made the point when he wrote a report on risk management in New South Wales government agencies, and he said there's two major failings he found in those government agencies. The first one was people undertook risk management without talking to a wide range of people. They usually engaged a very small number of people in doing a risk assessment for an organisation. So very limited perspectives about the world context, and about the organisational history, and about peer organisations, what they had actually um, experienced. The second thing he said was that organisations typically based the consequence on the level of consequence they could manage. So if they thought they could manage a 100 year flood event, they'd say the consequences from floods is X. That is what was expected in one 100 year event. They never looked at one in a thousand year event or a probable maximum flood. They tended to base the consequences on what they thought they could actually successfully manage, not on the worst case scenario. And these are two things that greatly limit the ability of risk under 31,000 to be successfully done. As part of the presentation today, what I want us very keen to do is to get you thinking about then how do we change organisations from being organisations that have their eyes wide shut, that is, a very limited view about adversity coming towards them, a very limited capability to see sudden onset changes that were growing either internationally or you know, domestically or in their supply chains, and, and turn that around to be creating organisations that were eyes wide open in respect to possible risks, to possible threats that had enhanced capability to see what was coming towards them, to be able to see adversity and therefore be adequately prepared for that adversity and prosper and profit from that times of adversity. So I want to get into now is this concept of future risk and say to ourselves, is future risk foreseeable? Is it possible to build what we call sentinels in organisations and create an organisation that has 
strong sentinel capability. That is, the ability to see those weak signals and interpret them and recognise them to indicate storm clouds are actually gathering. Storm clouds either nationally, internationally or in their supply chain or even within their own business. Albert Einstein made this quote, and there's two key points in this quote, and I think this ties back to risk management. Risk management very much ties risk to a rational process. And as, and as Albert Einstein said, he said that that's ignoring the gift of the intuitive mind. And I think that as we look at sentinels and, and sentinel theory, that good sentinels often have an intuitive ability to assess the landscape, to assess the environment that their business operates in, and to see those weak signals that say something's changing. I want to talk to you a story of a case study. This is Rick Rascola. Rick worked for Stanley Morgan, and Stanley Morgan, one of the tenants in the World Trade Centre. Rick was uh, ex US military, Welshman by birth, and Rick was responsible for safety and security for Morgan Stanley in the World Trade Centre. They had quite a large number of staff. Uh, Rick had actually written a report to his management, and he said, We're not in, in an iconic building. And if I was a terrorist, this building would be a target of mine, and I would actually drive a truck into the basement and explode a bomb and try and bring down the building. This was written quite a bit of time before the 1993 World Trade Center attack. Management, of course, unable to see weak signals, uh, said that Rick was uh, dreaming, that he should go away and get back to his core, responsible his core job, and uh, not worry about such things. Needless to say, after the 1993 World Trade Center attack, Rick was summoned back to management. They said, Rick, you actually foresaw that. You warned us that this was possible. We'd like you to go away and actually think, what else is possible? And Rick had done some more work, and again, relying on the fact that this was an iconic building, and looking at the terrorism environment, I wrote another paper saying that he would actually fly planes into the building. At the time of the World Trade Center attack, the J Morgan Stanley were actually trying to uh, break their lease to, to, to relocate out of the building. And uh, Rick had spent a lot of effort uh, creating a very first-class, world-class um, evacuation capability among staff and out of the building safely to safe locations. And Rick had drilled those staff very, very hard. And the day of the World Trade Center attack, uh, Rick was very successful. Uh, all but a small handful of staff were safely evacuated from the building. Uh, and a small handful of staff chose not to obey the orders that Rick was issuing. Rick went back into the building to try and save those people, and Rick's body was never found. But a good example of a sentinel person who could intuitively assess the environment and the context the business was in and foresee developing risks.